All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Today, back in the studio, gonna be a beautiful scene. What we've got today again is nice stretch canvas, large palette knives, and of course, buckets of oil paint. Now today, I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is, I wanna make the whole concept of the painting about mainly the foreground water. I want it to be a beautiful, tranquil water. And the reason I want that is because uh, in the distance, I'm gonna be painting a thunderhead. So the thunderhead's quite a dramatic thing. I'm gonna create the energy between the thundercloud and then the beautiful foreground water. Now we'll see how that goes. All right, now this is obviously a studio work, like I said, and what I'm gonna do is use a whole lot of that reference material from my plein air trips, and I'll show some of it through the show so you can check out where I've been and what I've been doing. And uh, just generally have fun and feel like I'm back in the moment at the spot and the more I can feel like that hopefully the more I can create what I want. All right let's get started on the biggest differences. All right so now I've put in my horizon line which is above the center, the center of the picture is about there which I don't want, so I want it to be above it. So this whole foreground is going to be water. That's going to be the bank of the cliff there. Now I've just put a few darks, so I want some trees just feeling as I'm going. Now I might go for some ultramarine blue. I've got my little reference over there, one of my references. Just going to lightly stick in a bit of blue here. There's an undertone. Ultramarine. Nice and thin, so you can almost see you can kind of see the white coming through the board. That translucent effect. All right, so now I'll just feel, use a bit of magenta. Go with a little bit of red. I'll just throw a few darks up. Where do Just feeling some shapes here I am. It's not setting concrete. It's just going for feel at the moment. Now, okay, I'll go for a bit of Viridian Green. A little bit of yellow to with that green because I want a bit of Burnt Sienna with it. I think I'll keep the white out of it for now. So I've got Burnt Sienna, Viridian Green, Yellow Ochre. Maybe I'm just gonna stick a few of those in, up and about. This could be, just keep the Burnt Sienna, she's a bit cold. This will be the darkest dark, so I'll foliage. Something along those lines. Move it like so. Okay. Now, a little bit of magenta with that green. Add a little bit of white now. I'm trying to lighten the tone as it goes back a bit. grey so we'll go for some magenta green just feeling a few shapes in there so these are the uh, just the trees on the bank in the distance as they go off like so. Just lighten it a little bit. Just radiating it a little bit as it goes back. So, right. A tree here, I reckon. Okay, what do we got? That, that, that one there. Just lighten the tone of this one a bit. Okay, now, gonna mix up a bit of burnt sienna, magenta, 
getting a bit of that ultramarine blue. I'm trying to put in the colour of the bank in shadow. So what have we got here? Burnt sienna, white. The uh, ultramarine blue just knocks it back because it's on the opposite side of the colour wheel. So you've got the burnt sienna, which is the main earthy colour with the magenta. Then you want to weaken it a bit. So by putting a bit of blue in, it knocks it back and makes it less of an intense colour. Right. Not too bad. I'm adding a bit of a white magenta, okay. Right about there. So, yep. Just go with a few upward marks. Bearing the marks a little bit bluer to knock it back a bit as it recedes further back. here too because this is the other side. <laughs> Just get that in. Right. right. Just stand back and see if I've got the balance right on the composition. Very important. Alright so that's pretty level. That's how I want it. Okay now I'll go for a bit of the reflection in the water so we'll have just a basic reflection of these trees and whatever coming down. Okay let's do that. What are we going to do today? Some sort of green so it'll obviously be Viridian green, burnt sienna, bit of yellow ochre. There's going to be white in this because these type of rivers sort of have that feel about them. Let's have a look here. Yeah. Bit more green, just go by feel. Bit more green, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and white. Each day is slightly different. Let's just have a look what we got. Too bad. So I just get some paint on. Now, obviously getting right there, so I'll mix up a bigger brew. So that's more paint, a lot more green. It's very much going to use more green in this one than usual because there's a lot, mostly water. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and I didn't put enough green on, I was a bit stingy. So I'll do that now. Out of a tube, this one. Stick a bit of that there, look at that, lovely. Okay. Now that is a big brew, that is beautiful. Oh, look at that. Needs a bit more of a brown in it. Brown and yellow ochre. A bit more brown. That is a big, lovely, look at that, isn't that just fantastic stuff? Okay. All right. Just constantly feeling it's quite a brown I need. right up to the edge. We need a lot of paint so it's all going on. A lot of paint is going on. But I'm not going to make it hugely thick this reflection. But it's still going to need a lot of paint. It's just such a big painting so. Okay, now it's going to be a tree just here. So 
and that'll go in there. That one there. Yep, hopefully. Beautiful soft colour in there. Starting to feel good now. That bank, even though the water is reflecting mainly green because it's green water, there's a little bit of brown like that reflected into it. I'll just put a little bit, just a twang of it, so you can feel just that colour a little bit where the bank is. Okay, so here I might just pull a bit of it down like so. That's a good one. A little bit of it in, like that. That's getting it in here yeah, nicely. And go back through like that. It's tying it all together nicely, that one. There we go, so that's good. All right, so now I'll put this four gram water in. Really subdued, it's a little bit more subdued, so I'll put a bit of blue to knock it back a bit. It's a lighter tone here. Like you'll just feel it. Similar, but it's, it's a slightly weaker colour and it's reflecting the sky a bit, so I'll put a bit of blue in. There's a big blobber. Just put that to one side. That was just a bit of a skin paint. Sometimes you get that with the tins, <clears throat> but uh, not too often. As a general rule, it's not too bad if you're always using the paint uh, out of the tins, even when you're <clears throat> putting the paint back in. It's not too much of a problem if you uh, I intend on using the paint fairly soon again. It usually doesn't skin. If you leave it for a few months, it may. But then you can peel that skin off anyway. That's putting the paint back in these tins I'm talking about. These tins I'll paint with well. When I'm finished with these big blobs of paint, I like to put anything left over that's cleaned back in the tin, bang it down. If you get a bit of a skin, it's no drama. You can just peel the skin off again, as long as it's just on the top and you flatten it off. Right, back into the game, what are we doing? Okay, so we've got that. Plenty of talking, you better get back into it. Mix up a bit more so there's greens, browns, a bit more blue like I said. Oh my god, there we go, let's have a look. Just a little bit more white to freeze it off a bit. A bit more blue. That's the reflection. What have we got now? Let's have a look. It's a little bit too cold, a bit more burnt sienna. Just vary it as you go. Just trying to get that paint nicely down to the edge here like this. There's not too much white showing on the bottom. Or no white showing on the bottom. Where am I? Over there, yep. Here we go like that. Off to the edge. Like so. Mix up a bit of a lighter blue here. I kind of half mix it with that. Let's just have a look. You've got to mix that more thoroughly. So I've mixed a little bit of ultramarine blue in it. Just want to mix that into that green so it's kind of the sky reflecting into it. over here, a bit of that sky colour coming in. Let's get that over there like that. Okay, what we got? We're getting 
getting a basic coverage, covering, trying to get rid of most of the white so we've got a much closer appearance as to what the painting's going to look like, obviously. Ooh, what are we going to do now? Before I go any further, what I might do is make sure the camera's on, which is always a good thing. Hang up, clean that up. Just get a bit of white and a little bit of blue. Clean that knife a bit more. It's got a bit too much green on it, so there we go. One bonus about using a knife, though, is you can, uh, instead of having muddy brushes, they've very quickly got a clean instrument to work with. Right. Picture. I want a thunderhead. I'm just trying to work out where I want it. Just a bit lighter tone on that. A little bit of ultramarine. I mean, a little bit of magenta with the ultramarine. So it's a dusty sort of mauve colour. Somewhere along the lines, I'll stand back and have a look at that. Somewhere along the lines of what I was thinking. Burnt sienna and magenta. Blue, just mixing up a kind of cloudy colour. There's a few clouds in the sky as well as as well as the thunderhead itself, there's a few other clouds chuffing around, so I'm just trying to compose them at the moment. This is part of the composition, getting this flow line kind of through here. Through here. I'm just putting lines at the moment, I'll do some more action. Get it more how I want it later, but at the moment. I want to feel the general shape of what I'm after here. Something like that. Right, now. A little bit of thalo blue and yellow ochre. Thalo blue is a strong colour, makes it kind of green. A bit of ultramarine so it's not too strong. placed around. A bit more ultramarine blue and white. This is some of the sky colours that are reflecting in and I'm just sort of blocking them in here and there, feeling it as I go. Nothing's too exact at, at the moment. Scrape some of that paint off. Okay, so we're starting to get a bit of a feel as to what's going on. some coverage here. Getting the paint on. We'll work out what we're doing in a minute. I just got to get some more coverage so I've got something to work with. Take some of that under paint off. A lot of that water and stuff is kind of blocked in, but obviously something that's lagging is that sky, so let's get it in. Let's 
There's plenty of white in it, so I'll go for a white. Get rid of some of that green off my hand. Now, what colour? I'll start with a little bit of phthalo. It's a strong colour, you've got to be careful, and a tiny bit of ultramarine, so it's not quite as strong. What I mean by strong is a lot of green in the phthalo, and it's a very strong pigment. Sometimes it's too strong, just put a bit of ultramarine. Ultramarine has a bit of red, so that'll weaken it pretty quick. Now, I've got a yellow ochre, so I want something fairly high key. Let's have a look. An almost slight green appearance. Lower part of the sky can quite often get green. Particularly, I've found in these examples when you've got thunderclouds and whatever around, you can really sometimes get that slight green feel in the sky. And we're just blocking bits of it here and there. And uh, I might as well put a bit of it in the here because it's going to end up in here eventually. You're not there, hang on. There yet. There's bits of it here and there. Try not to touch too much in there. Just creating a few patches of it. Now I just put a bit more blue white, ultramarine blue, if you change colour a little bit as she goes up, a bit more white in that mix, Let's try and get it in between without actually touching those dark shadowy tones just yet. little bits and pieces here and there where you'd like to have them. Okay, so now we've got that, we'll go up a level, which means we need a bit more blue. Ultramarine blue I'm working with. Some more white obviously, but not quite as much white. some gaps here and there. All happening, all happening. Right now, just put a bit more, I reckon, go even darker. More blue, touch of magenta as we go even higher. So there's a little bit more red in that. I don't get that green. Hang a sec, hang a sec. Get my paint all over me. Just clean up my hands a little before I get too carried away there. Okay, so there's a little bit more magenta in that mix. Right up here. It's a bit too dark. I reckon we can back her off a tad with a bit more white. I do want it to be fairly dark to really pop against that cloud of thunderhead that I intend to put in there. Not going to hurt them, a fair bit of blue pigment in it. Look at that go on there, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, blue, magenta, white. in here and there. Just get that top corner filled up. That, right. Starting to get something, okay. Now, I want another level of cloud here. 
So I'll mix up some white. A little bit of burnt sienna and magenta. I'm just going to make a kind of cloudy colour. Burnt sienna, magenta and white. I'm feeling like I want to kind of rip it through here. Over this way. A bit more magenta. The blue's already in the sky. I was putting blue in the mix, but because it's mixing with the blue in the sky, I don't need so much blue in this pigment I'm mixing because it's already there and it's mixing as I put it on. So I just, uh, just getting a feel of some of those clouds bouncing around. Down there. Some in the middle here. Make sure I'm not wearing any of that paint. Okay, so we're starting to get there. Now, more magenta in the mix. Now I'm going to do right on the base here where there's more an atmospheric grey because it's down closer to the horizon. I'm just going to put a little bit of that in, let's have a look. Make a little bit of it here and a little bit there. some of them together a bit if I can without being too clumsy. Pull some of those colours together. Right down to the bank. Blending those different shades together a bit. Just whatever it takes. You can see the sky starting to gradiate now. Getting that lovely gradiation. This is good fun. Right. I'm starting to see something happening there. I'm starting to put some of those colours in here too now, where I can see what I'm doing. It's all happening. Haven't got time to think too much. Just got to keep on going. <laughs> it's all good fun. It's all good fun. Mixing up that beautiful high key colour that was this kind of green here. Just going to introduce it. Further up into the picture. up some of those magentas and burnt siennas again to get that cloudy type colour. It's up here. Mix a bit of that in too, eh? A bit of that goes in. It has to match what's up there. Put a bit of it in here. Right. Paint flying everywhere. Just 
just filling in a bit of this and a bit of that. Okay, I'll stand back and have a look. Okay, so there's a lot of colour up here. A lot of the subtle colours are up in the sky. Now that thunderhead I want to drop down in. Right, so let's go with some of that. Go with some white. Burnt sienna. Some of those magentas are already mixed in with that cloud colour. Let's have a look. Right, I just want to feel what's going on here. I don't know, I just... a little bit more bursty in there because I actually want to play it into the lower part of this thunder here. A bit of that bensy in and white. A bit more magenta. Play some nice colours in there. Beautiful colour right down on the horizon. You kind of get a magenta y colour of the thunderhead. I'll just put a little bit of blue to knock it off. A bit of a weaker chroma, but stick some nice beautiful colours in. Make them around everywhere. Because what you've got to do is uh, the reflections of the water is going to be. Spreading them around a fair bit, those colours, so stick them around in different places. Get here and get there. Okay, now, just put this in the bin for a minute. Put some of that colour here, so I reckon, just spread it around a bit. Never finishing anything, constantly always running around doing this, doing that. Putting bits here and bits there. And I'll just add a bit of that colour into there. A bit into there. Dances around. Alright. Next one is going to be white. The cat orange deep. Let's have a look at this. So it's a really high key colour, it's cat orange deep deep tone so it's more of an orangey yellow mixed with the white and then we go. You go a little bit more orange than that power it up a bit more with a bit more orange beautiful peachy colours and they can be down in here now stick them on they are the keynote of the painting. It's starting to pull together with a bit of a highlight like that. Immediately this, the painting starts to come together a bit more once you start doing that. I'll just quickly mix up a bit of a shadow colour for that thunderhead with some ultramarine blues, a bit of magenta, ultramarine blue. It's kind of like a bit shadowy here and there as it goes up. We'll just put that up there. Some in there. Colours mixed in everywhere. Right now, with a cleaner knife, go for more of that highlight again of the CAD colours. Put some of them on here, look at that. Now she's really popping. Big thunderhead.
Okay, well, I've got a lot of that in. Now what I'm going to do is I've got the shadow tones of these trees. I need to put a bit more of the light source colour. So I'll mix a bit of that and get some yellow ochre. Burnt sienna. I've already got a bit of a green here, so I'll just darken that one off a bit. Some burnt siennas. Yellow ochres and whatever it takes. Greens. Let's have a look at what we've got. We just want we put it on. Yeah, I'd go a bit lighter than that, and we've got lightness here. A bit more yellow ochre. Okay, yeah, it's not far off what I want, so start lightly applying that. Just lightly putting it on, leaving gaps and just lightly pulling through. Letting the shadowy underpainting come through. So that immediately is starting to paint. It needs to be a little bit more magenta, which I've got here from when I mixed that bank. There's a bit of a magenta colour. I've thrown it into those greens to knock them back a bit for further distant ones like so. in. More blue in that mix. As it seeds off into the distance here, it's got more blue. Needs to be lighter in tone. Just lighten the tone a bit. It's a bit darker, it's about. That really recedes it back. Okay, what are we doing here? A bit more height there. Just gonna pull through that to kind of blend the sky colour. <laughs> The sky colour is soften, softening the edges of the foliage, which is kind of how you see it in nature. It's pulling through different angles, changing the angles up here and there. Softening and a variety of marks. Too, don't we? I'll see what we got. Now this big knife, she's a ripper. Let's have a look. Yep, that's good for maybe painting some of these ripples because you've got such a big knife. You can start to put. Some of the crazy ripples that are coming down here. Let's have a look. I'm going to add a little bit in here. Do it that way. I'm trying to compose a funny sort of bend through there with the ripples. that knife is great for this sort of stuff like big foreground ripples it's getting the feeling of the flow which way the water's going it's 
giving them movement on the surface. Helping to blend just here. edges now where the uh, reflections are coming down all sorts of things can be happening there so we'll just go like so bring the paint upwards in that way get the knife lifting and dropping pulling the paint up higher like that colours here and there as he ripples through. It's really creating a surface on the water now. Okay, now I feel like I've pretty much got what I was after. I think that'll I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, I've got the big impression. Right at the start, the original concept of the painting was to have the contrast between beautiful, tranquil water from the view of the canoe and then a dramatic thunderhead up the top. So you've got that great contrast. And like I said, the whole time the painting was, the concept was about contrast. And I reckon contrast is a great thing in any painting. Be it hard to get soft, light against dark, detail against no detail, colour against complementary colour or even colour against no colour. Anything that's contrasting can create a dramatic effect and in this case it's the tranquility and the drama. Alright so in saying that this foreground is also a compositional lead-in if we want to talk composition for a second. That's a compositional lead-in that draws the eyes through like so and up here and then off into the main part of the picture so you've got this lead-in flow like so. I'm pretty happy with what I've done. I reckon I've achieved that. All right, so we'll get the camera off and we'll have a close look around. But remember, if you like the video, to like the video and also forward it on to your friends. And if you haven't subscribed, remember to do that and press that notification bell. That way you won't miss any of these videos as I upload them. Thanks for watching again. And until next time, I'll see you later.